the churches here in Florida and America and the world they have bowed to the devil and as a sign that they are devil worshippers right. That's right. They are flat. Christian women are sisters in Christ dressing like whores? Well, let's find out. And Ladies, girls, when you get up to get dressed to come to church, you need to realize you're coming to the holy house of God. Greetings, Sacred Pathfinders. Welcome back to our sacred space where we embark on a profound spiritual journey. Today, we delve into a crucial and expansive discussion. How to Spot a Jezebel in Church Before we embark on this exploration, let's acknowledge the prevalent issues affecting modern-day churches and delve into the intricate web of sex work influenced by various societal factors. We'll unravel these themes through the lens of sacred teachings and explore the impact of hip-hop music on the lives of our sacred sisters. Understanding the global landscape of sex work studies show that the involvement of one Two million Americans in sex work is just the tip of the iceberg. Globally, a staggering 90% of sex workers find themselves under the control of a pimp, navigating a complex world fraught with abuse, addiction, organized crime, poverty, and trauma. The sacred teachings will guide us as we examine these multifaceted issues, seeking enlightenment and compassion in our approach. The Subtle Power of Hip-Hop in Sacred Spaces while hip-hop music is not inherently negative, its influence can sometimes counter the teachings of our sacred path. The impact, though often subtle, can be powerful, especially on the impressionable souls within our sacred community. We'll explore how the lyrics and themes within hip-hop can either uplift or potentially lead astray, shedding light on the need for discernment and awareness in our sacred spaces. Now let's unravel the concept of a Jezebel within our sacred context. It transcends the individual and becomes a mindset capable of bringing about the spiritual downfall of even the most influential figures within our sacred community. The manifestations of this spirit are varied, and our vigilance is crucial. God, you ought not to come here to show off, wait, your legs, and if you're constantly having to fight to stay decent, you got the war wrong wardrobe on. And not just for church, but for anywhere else. Now, I am not mad. I'm just trying to tell you. People who are here and decide I don't want to be up in the bleachers or at the back where there are some girls who come to church. It amazes me. Can I take a station break? This time is on you. I don't know how people will wake up Sunday morning and decide they want to wear one tights. Are you going to the nightclub? You will not wear that if you're going for a job interview because there is a certain decorum that is expected. May I educate you, perhaps you are not aware. The house of the God is a solemn place. It's a place where we come with a heart of worship. Bible says by their foot you will know them. You may have come in as a battered prostitute and literally naked but if you are sitting under the word for goodness sake take a look at the person on your right or left the word has bore fruit in them so we expect the same fruit in you why will you wear something that when you are going up the stairs you have to be covering everything did you not know you were going to climb steps did they tell you this church is one one floor of church with all the With all the AC and the cold, you will still be wearing all manners of things. Don't get confused though. I have all those manner of things, but they're for my house. Yes, they're for my house. And guess what? When I'm on holiday, I wear my shorts and I will feel like a happening babe, hot babe, chick. But there's a conduct in the house of God. If you will not wear almost rags because it's so small, you know, to go and get that job because you know they expect you to have a corporate look. What job are you coming to get in the house of God that that is befitting for? I don't know. But you know what? You can dress well. You can be attractive. You can even be sassy, but you can be clean about it. Bring our attention to the sacred scriptures. We find instances where those engaged in the trade were met with compassion and grace. 
Lessons drawn from the stories of Delilah to Rahab highlight that God's grace extends to all, irrespective of societal judgments. By understanding the sacred perspective on sex work, we gain insights that can inform our approach to the challenges of our modern sacred society. When the church that you go to justify having more than one wife and more than one husband. That's right. And the bishop have them. That's right. Do you hear the word of God talking? And if it seem evil unto Glory you to, God. to serve the Lord, if it seem evil wrong unto you to serve the unto Lord, unto you to serve God, choose you this day. You got to make a choice. Whom ye will serve. In other words, if you're not going to serve God, right. You're going to serve somebody That's right. or something. That's right. That's now right. let us get something clear. God don't care what you don't like. No. God don't care what you don't want to do. No. God ain't going to make no changes to suit none of us. No way. Who are we? Who are we? Nothing but dust. That's right. God ain't impressed with nobody. No. Brother, God ain't impressed with you. <laughs> Pastor Jenner, you don't know who I am. You ain't nothing but dust. Dust. You come from the hood just like I did. That's right. That's all. That's all. That's all. There, there's something that can stop all that. <laughs> Boom. That's right. And you're dead. That's right. Look at the sick life you live in. Drink yourself to death and come home, slap your wife around and look at your daughter with such lust that you're ready to rape your own daughter right. and sodomize your own son. That's right. That's right. Now let's dissect the signs of a Jezebel within our sacred community. Vigilance is paramount as we protect our sacred path from potential spiritual harm. Watch for manipulative behavior a divisive spirit, and a lack of accountability. The Jezebel spirit can cloak itself well, so discernment becomes our spiritual shield in identifying and combating its influence. Before we conclude, let's offer sacred advice and a word of warning to our fellow pathfinders. Dear sacred pathfinders, be vigilant and discerning within our sacred community. Uphold the values of love, compassion, and accountability. Spiritual downfall can begin with subtle influences, so let's collectively guard our faith and our sacred path with unwavering determination. Thank you for joining us today on Sacred Pathfinders. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until our paths cross again, may your sacred journey be filled with wisdom, discernment, and the unwavering light of truth.